Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. I'm Helios and I normally stand on the other side of the camera, but Aurora is attending a summer program, so I will be your host today to review the Hallett Mage S resin printer from Creality. The retail price is about $460. Let's take a look at what we can get from this machine. The print volume is 223 by 126 by 230 millimeters, so I would consider it a mid-size resin printer. It has a 10.1 inch LCD, and the 14K resolution is one of the highest available in today's budget resin printer market. The light source is an upgraded version 3 which claims to deliver higher light uniformity and accuracy. The motion system uses dual linear rails on the z-axis with a closed loop stepper motor. It introduces some new modes called Dynax and Dynax Plus, which basically allow you to increase the speed of the platform when you need to pull it upwards, and shortens the distance to decrease the overall print time while maintaining the same print quality. In order to achieve a higher pulling speed, it is also equipped with a new release film on the resin tray called Picture. For other features, it has a laser engraved build platform, which is a new type of platform compared to the older flat aluminum platforms for easier release when the print is finished. It also has a built-in air purifier as well as ducting to exhaust the odor outside. For software, it comes with both Creality's own Hallett Box Slicer and also comes with a three-month paid version of Chi2 Box Pro, but I'll mainly be using the free Creality Hallett Box in this test. Their own slicer supports local Wi-Fi printing, cloud printing, as well as a USB drive to print completely offline. It also has some optional upgrades like the smart resin pump and a USB camera, but my test units didn't come with these options. I would like to thank Creality for sending us this machine and for sponsoring today's video. With that, let's get started. Besides the printer, Creality also sent us their UW03 washing and curing station. Both machines are one piece, so no assembly is required. The printer came with some accessories, including a ducting, power cord, USB drive, some tools, and a spare release film for the resin tray. Let's turn it on and set it up. First, select language, then your location. After that, it would be the agree to whatever it said screen. Then select your Wi-Fi SSID and enter the password. After the Wi-Fi is connected, it shows a screen for you to use your phone app to bind the machine to your Creality Cloud account. If you aren't a fan of cloud printing, you can skip this part and use your Wi-Fi network or a USB drive to print completely offline. From the home screen, go to Settings, Print Settings, Z-Axis Move, and select Reset Position. The Z-Axis will move up to the top and trigger the limit switch, and we can remove the remaining protective foam, and also remove the resin tray and get ready for leveling. It came with a leveling paper, we will place it on the LCD screen, then loosen all four bolts on the build platform. After that, we can select leveling and the platform will move all the way down to the LCD screen. Apply some pressure to the platform to make it level with the LCD screen, then tighten all four bolts. You should feel some resistance when you try to pull out the leveling paper. Then we can put everything back and start pouring some resin. I'll start with some Creality High Precision Resin. Before we use the slicer to slice our own model, I will try one of the sample prints that came with the machine. I will try this file, which seems to print a bunch of eggs. There are two options. You can choose to follow the file parameters or follow the printer firmware parameters. For the file parameters, the estimated time is 4 hours and 3 minutes. For the printer firmware, it would be the same, so I assume this file is sliced using the standard profile. We will test out the fast Dynax print mode later. Okay, the first test seems pretty successful. It took roughly four hours to finish, but the screen didn't count the total printing time of the job. I will throw the whole platform into the washing machine and wash it with 99% IPA for five minutes. The support is fairly easy to remove without breaking the egg. I will cure it for another five minutes to see the result. All of them are printed nicely and I can't see any issues with the printer. It seems the hardware is working as expected. Then, I will try to print multiple items at the same time. As for resin printing, the time for printing a layer won't increase for multiple items. The total print time would also be the same as long as your items are the same height. There are two modes in the slicer. The default mode is printing at 0.05mm layer height. The motor will be raised 8mm at 5mm per second speed after a layer is printed. When the platform is moved down, the LED light source will delay for 6 seconds. The curing exposure time for each layer is 2.8 seconds, and as a result, the total time for one normal layer is 1.6 plus 6 plus 2.8 seconds, which is about 10 and a half seconds. For bottom layers, it will expose for 30 seconds and print four layers. 
For the Dynax mode, the motor speed has been increased from 5 mm per second to 20 mm per second. The LED delay is decreased from 6 to 4 seconds. The exposure time for normal layers and bottom layers are the same. It also lets you set the transition layer between the bottom and normal layers, which doesn't show up in the default mode. So the time required for a normal layer would be about 0 0.4 plus 4 plus 2.8, which is about 7.2 seconds, so it's overall around 31% faster. Okay, let's slice this model and see how long it's going to take. It took 3 minutes and 18 seconds to export this file. The file size is about 74 megabytes. I will also test the network feature by sending this file over my local Wi-Fi network. It took 2 minutes and 4 seconds to complete. I will just start the print remotely. This screen is supposed to show the USB camera, but since I don't have one installed, there is nothing here. As I am using the default profile, let's check if the time for printing one layer matches our parameters. It seems the time is accurate, it took about 10 and a half seconds to finish one layer. As the screen won't show the exact printing time when it's done, I manually timed it and the print finally took about 3 hours and 15 minutes to finish, which is in line with the estimated time. I found someone missing, it seems Thanos didn't erase half of the universe, just himself. I will also throw the whole build platform into the tank and wash it for 5 minutes. The model stuck pretty well and I can just use the metal spatula to pop them off the plate. Then remove the support and go through the same curing process for about 5 minutes. The details on all models are really nice. The good thing about resin printing is when printing multiple items, even if one fails, it normally won't affect the other items. Then I will print a lizard. This lizard requires a lot of support and I just use the slicer to generate them automatically. The estimated time using the default profile is about 3 hours and 54 minutes. This time I will try to start the print manually on the touchscreen. If we follow the file parameters, the estimated time is 3 hours and 49 minutes. If I choose the fast Dynax print mode and enable the Dynax plus mode, the estimated time is about 1 hour faster, but this print mode requires fast curing resin. So I will try the default mode first as I still have some high precision resin in the tray. The print took a little less than 4 hours, the base didn't stick too well, but it seems there's no impact on the print at all. After going through the washing, support removing, and curing process, the lizard looks perfect. When zooming in really close under a macro lens, the details are clear and crisp. I will also try the Dynax Plus Fast mode with fast curing resin. Let's check the time of a layer. The default mode requires about 10 and a half seconds, and this Dynax Plus mode requires about 7 seconds. The print took a little less than 3 hours, which is also in line with the estimated time. This time, with the fast curing resin, the print stuck perfectly on the build plate. When compared to prints, the one on the left using high precision and the default profile look better. The details on the lizard are more crisp. When zooming in using a macro lens, the pattern on the surface of the high precision resin looks deeper, not only on the head, but the whole body. Without side-by-side -side comparison, the fast one still doesn't look that bad. Finally, I'm going to print some Dragon Ball characters. As I found that the Dynax and Dynax Plus modes actually share the exact same parameters, Creality claims that Dynax Plus mode will still print 10-15% to faster in some cases, depending on the model. So, I'll just stick to Dynax mode with high precision resin to print Goku and Buu at the same time. As you can see, Goku has failed. It seems the base of Goku is too heavy, and the support just can't lift it up. Buu was printed successfully, and he is so happy that he survived. However, upon closer inspection, there is a minor layer blending line in this area. We'll try again with some changes. I removed the base of Goku and kept Boo unchanged. I will use the same Dynax fast print mode with the same high precision resin to see if we can get a better result. This time, Boo was too heavy and the support couldn't lift it up. Goku wasn't too good either, as you can see one leg was broken. It seems the high precision resin didn't work too well with the Dynax mode. As I have only successfully printed one Boo, I will switch to the fast curing resin and print Goku and Vegeta at the same time. This time, both of them printed successfully. 
It seems no matter whether you choose Dynax or Dynax Plus mode, using fast curing resin works much better than regular or high precision resin. The models look really nice, let's put them all together, and from the color you can tell the high precision resin is lighter in terms of print quality. The high precision is better, but when using the fast Dynax mode, it's not as reliable as the fast curing resin. Okay, let's talk about the pros and cons of this printer, starting with the pros. First, the 14K resolution is really high. When using high precision resin, it delivers high details and the prints are crisp. Second, the build is solid. It uses dual linear rails and a closed loop stepper motor for the Z-axis, which allows it to move at a faster speed. Third, the release film on the resin tray is working well. I didn't find it to stick too well and cause prints to fail when using the default mode with high precision resin or using the Dynax mode with fast curing resin. The results are mostly reliable. Fourth, it has a built-in air filter as well as a ducting to exhaust the odor outside. When printing with a high precision resin, it has some odor as the lid of my printer is completely open for filming most of the time. But when using fast curing resin, even when the cover is opened, I can't smell anything at all. But having the filter and ducting offers an extra layer of protection which won't hurt. Fifth, the lid is a shield type that can be opened and closed with one hand. This type of lid works better than the traditional cover that needs to be lifted up with both hands. When working with resin, you are wearing gloves and your sticky hands make things pretty messy. So this shield lid is pretty handy. Now for the cons. First, the Hallett box, which is Creality's own slicer, is pretty slow. When it exports the file, even to your local hard drive, it takes 3-5 to five minutes or longer depending on the file size. The Chi2 box is faster and Creality also includes a pro license, but it's only for 3 months. So I would rather stick to the free slicer and hope Creality will improve its speed over time. Second, sending the file over the network is also slow. When uploading a 74 megabyte file, it took two minutes. For resin printing, your file can be large. For example, the Goku and Boo file is almost 400 megabytes. In that case, copying to the USB drive would be a much better option. Third, the Dynax mode is about 30% faster compared with the normal mode, as normal mode requires 10.5 seconds per layer, and Dynax mode requires 7 seconds per layer, so I'm not sure how it can print 3-4 to four times faster as it claims. Fourth, the touchscreen interface allows you to control a lot of parameters, but when it's printing, it doesn't show the current layer image. When it finishes, it doesn't show the print summary and tell you how long the print took. I think Creality should add these basic features back. Fifth, it doesn't come with auto-leveling. As a new flagship 14K resin printer in 2024, I expect to see auto-leveling, but you still need to go through the old way to level the platform using a piece of paper. In conclusion, this Hallett Mage S is a solid build. It came with one of the highest resolutions among all the budget resin printers. It can print 30% faster than most other printers, but definitely not three to four times faster. But the drawbacks are a lack of auto-leveling. If you have some experience with resin printing, leveling the platform isn't a huge deal. I also think those minor issues in the slicer and screen firmware will be very likely to improve over time. If you are interested in this Hallett Mage S resin printer, I put the link under the description. I also added the link to my website, aurorotechchannel.com, which monitors the prices of over 150 popular 3D printers, laser engravers, and CNC machines. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.